Moving to the question, the instrument that is used for shift enucleation is so what are the instrument that we use for the shift enucleation? So the option A chisel and mallet. So this option is a chisel and mallet. Uh, periosteal elevator. This is periosteal elevator. This is uh, curate. So all these three instruments we use for the cyst enucleation. So in the cyst enucleation you typically use combination of instruments like curate, chisel, mallet and periosteal elevator. So these all these instruments will help in erasing the cyst lining from the cavity wall and hence exposing the underlying cystic cavity. So the answer here is the correct answer is A, B and option D. So this question was asked in one of your INICT exam recent papers. So uh, high chances of getting them repeat in your upcoming exam. A nine year old child having carious maxillary lateral incisors got small swelling over the respective area. In 48 hours, the swelling enlarged and uh, reached the lower border of the eye. So it's very sensitive to touch hot with the painful to touch stimuli. The lymph nodes are palpable, little fever, the swelling rebounds on pressure. Uh, the, what would be your recommended treatment? So the presentation of a rapid enlarging, hot, painful and fluctuant swelling suggest that uh, presence of an abscess. So in the context of an carious maxillary lateral incisors, it is likely that there is a odontogenic infection. that has lead to formation of abscess. So the primary treatment for an abscess is the primary treatment is incision and drainage. So remember this for exam point of view. So this procedure involves making an incision into the abscess to allow the pus and infectious material to drain out. The option antibiotic and hot fermentation well they not be they may not be sufficient because the pus, the, the pus needs to be physically removed to prompt healing, to promote healing and resolution of the infection. So antibiotic and hot fermentation, they may be the part of treatment plan, but it is not the primary treatment for an abscess. Antibiotic can help to control the infection systematically, but primary focus should be on draining the abscess. So that is why your answer here is B. Moving to the next question, uh, bacterial spores, they are best destroyed by. So bacterial spores, they are the highly resistant to environment and are more, uh, they are the most resilient forms of the bacteria. So the best way to eliminate uh, this is by autoclaving. So remember the, uh, the temperature and the pressure we use for autoclave is 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. That's the standard temperature. So that will kill all the viable microorganism including the bacterial spores, making it a reliable method for sterilization. So answer is a C. Turner's technique is, well Turner technique, it is done to increase the depth of floor of mouth in the, in the myeloid region. So the Turner technique, it is a surgical procedure that is used to increase the depth of floor of the mouth. 
so what mm-hmm. what you will do is you will make incision on the lingual side of the alveolar ridge in the posterior region so and performing a supra periosteal dissection so during the supra periosteal dissection the incision is made along the lingual side of the alveolar ridge typically in the posterior region the periosteum is then gently lifted or separated for, from the underlying bone to expose the mylohyoid muscle so once the mylohyoid muscle is identified it can be separated from its attachment and repositioned or sutured to achieve the desired vestibular depth so that will increase it is done to increase the depth of floor of mouth uh that is the troner technique so troner technique is increasing the depth of floor so option b is the answer of choice so apart from that we have various other technique uh they are the number one i have discussed it is the turner's technique other is other is caldwell technique so it is similar to the turner technique but it involves a more extensive dissection of the mylohyoid muscle so in this technique the muscle is completely separated from its attachment to the bone the muscle is then sutured at lower position to increase the depth of floor of mouth the other other technique is obwegerser technique so remember these are the three techniques trunner technique caldwell and and obwegers so uh, this technique differ from the trunner and caldwell that it involves a it involves a submucosal vestibuloplasty so instead of dissecting and suturing the mylohyoid muscle so this layer uh, this technique foc- focus on the submucosal layer so the incision it is made along the mucogingival junction and submucosal dissection is performed so the submucosal tissue is then advanced and sutured to create the desired vestibular depth so all these three techniques aim is to increase the depth of floor of mouth moving to the next question air entrapped in case of subcutaneous emphysema is generally absorbed in well the air trapped in the case of subcutaneous emphysema it is usually absorbed over time as the body naturally reabsorbs the trapped air so the answer is 1 to 2 weeks so that is the correct time uh, uh subcutaneous emphysema it is typically absorbed gradually by the body tissue over a course of 1 to 2 weeks so remember this subcutaneous emphysema it is a self limiting condition what that means that means that it will it will resolve on its own as body will absorb the trapped air and underlying cause of emphysema should be identified and treated to prevent its reoccurrence next question the deans technique is so this question 
uh, is important for your entrance exam it is intraseptal alveoplasty so dean technique it is also known as intraseptal alveoplasty so that is done to reshape and smooth the alveolar ridge so this figure has been taken from the balaji oral surgery so this technique is primarily done to create a more favorable and even ridge to ensure the proper fit and stability of the dental prosthesis so after the tooth that has been multiple tooth that they have been extracted small incisions they are made in the gum tissue near the alveolar ridge so dentists will reshape the bone within the alveolar ridge uh, in a dean's technique the focus is on removing bone from the septum so that is the bony partition between the adjacent tooth socket that will create a uniform ridge so the bone it is eliminated contoured and there should be is checked for any irregularity or sharp edges or any undercut so that can hinder the placement of the denture so when the shaping desired shaping is achieved the incision they are closed with the sutures so dean's technique it is useful in cases when there are bony irregularities or exostosis along the alveolar ridge so that helps to create a more suitable foundation for the dental prosthesis so dean's technique is simply intraseptal alveoplasty remember that for your exam point of view next question the ideal method for intubation in patient with bilateral tmj ankylosis and rotator mandible it is video laryngoscopy well in patient with a bilateral tmj ankylosis and rotator mandible uh intubation can be extremely challenging as we know that tmj ankylosis it refers to the fusion or limited movement of the tmj joint that can be that can uh, limit the ability to open the mouth so in that case a video laryngoscopy it is considered an ideal method for intubation uh, why we will be considering this video laryngoscopy so video laryngoscopy has a improved visualization why because there is a inbuilt camera and a video screen so that will provide a clear and magnified view of the glottis that is the opening to the trachea and surrounding structure so even when the mouth opening is limited that will improve uh, the oral surgeon visualization that would be crucial or important or successful for intubation so other option is limited mouth opening since there is li a limited mouth opening and retroded mandible so that will increase the risk of trauma during intubation attempts uh, there could be damage to teeth and soft tissues so uh, video larynx laryngoscopy uh, offer a more uh, approach uh, as the things would be clear on the the screen to visualize so that will uh, reduce or reduce the risk for complication so it is a safer approach for intubation moving to the next question 
the distant metastasis from the oral cavity frequently involves the distant metastasis from lung from the oral cavity most frequently involves the lung the lung metastasis they are more common in patient with oral cavity cancers compared to other distant organs after the lungs uh, the liver bone are the most common site for the distant metastasis from the oral cavity cancers so your answer of choice would be mark lungs in your exam the most common malignancy of submandibular gland is well the most common malignancy is the adenoid cystic carcinoma well remember adenoid cystic carcinoma it is the most common malignancy of the submandibular gland next question the most important feature of pleomorphic adenoma from the surgical standpoint is well the most important feature is the presence of pseudo capsule so the uh, the presence of pseudo capsule is important as the attempts at the enucleation that is removal of the tumor from it uh, from its pseudo capsule that should be done very carefully that can lead to incomplete removal of the tumor leaving behind the viable tumor uh, cell nest so there can be chances of reoccurrence Uh, let us move to the next question the majority of the minor slavery glands in oral cavity they are located well the uh, well the majority of the glands they are located at the junction of hard and the soft palate so mark answer d next question leafy gangs rings they are found in well they are found in ceot that is uh, leafy gangs uh, rings they are distinctive histological features in the ceot so these rings so these rings uh, will uh, represents the amyloid amyloid like uh, material and appears they appear as concentric rings in the circles the rings are in the circle that is why they are concentric rings when you view it under microscope so that feature is helps to identify and diagnose the ceot very important for your exam point of view next is zenita procedure is so zenita procedure it is also known as microvascular uh, decompression so uh, that is a treatment that is done to uh, for the treatment of the trigeminal neuralgia so the problem in the trigeminal neuralgia it lies because a blood vessel uh, that is the superior this uh, this superior cerebellar artery is uh, pressing on the nerves this nerve so this artery is will be pressing on this uh, this trigeminal nerve so that pressure on the nerve that will cause intense pain so in the surgery the surgeon main job is to carefully move the blood this blood vessel away from the nerve that will that will relieve the pressure so by doing this they can stop the nerve from sending pain signals to your brain that can elevate or reduce the pain uh, that patient with the trigeminal neuralgia experiences so zenita procedure is microvascular decompression mark your answer which of following flaps can be used for reconstruction of larger lower lip defect the answer is the answer here is banand flap 
now let us discuss these slabs the uh, number one bezoic flap remember uh, for your entrance exam just remember this flap it is used in which procedure tracheostomy procedure and it is not used for reconstruction of the lower lip defect uh, next is the bernard flap remember it is yes this bernard flap it is used in reconstruction of large lower lip defects so it is used in reconstruction of large lower lip defect bingo so it is known for its ability to reconstruct almost the entire lower lip so entire lower lip in a single stage procedure the third option is a millard flap remember the millard uh, it is uh, it is used for uh, repairing the congenital lip and the palate defect uh the rarman flap remember it is used for closure uh, of oral anteral fistula that is abnormal communication between the uh, oral cavity and the maxillary sinus uh millard flap it is used for the uh, cleft lip and palate surgeries so answer is bernard flap hope it is clear identify the type of wiring well it's the very simple question it's the gilmer direct interdental wiring so the most simplest and rapid method of immobilization of jaw is it's the gilmer method so here the middle portion of the wire it is twisted around the tooth so the free tails of wires they are then twisted together uh, together to form a uh, a plaited tail so that will allow stability and allow for intermaxillary fixation so after reducing the fracture the separated tails of wires they are twisted together in both upper and lower jaw and this fixation would helps to maintain the proper alignment of jaw during the healing procedure what is the direction of fracture line in horizontal unfavorable fracture the answer is a the lower border in an upward and forward direction to meet the upper border so this one is an example of a uh, horizontally unfavorable fracture so in this the fracture line runs from lower border of mandible in upward and forward direction meeting the upper border of the mandible so that is your answer of choice more about favorable and unfavorable fracture we have covered it in fracture uh, chapter please go through uh, that uh, to get more clear view pash operation it is it is marsupialization alone so well uh marsupialization it is a surgical procedure in which the cystic cavity suppose this one is the cyst the cavity of the cyst is opened and its wall they are sutured sutured to edges of the oral mucosa so that will create a drainage pathway uh, into the oral cavity
so the surgeon uh, will make an incision or opening into the cyst cavity so that will allow access to the contents inside surgeon then carefully sutures or stitches uh, the wall of cyst to the surrounding oral mucosa by attaching the wall of cyst to mucosa a pathway is created for fluids for drainage so partial operation is mass utilization alone remember that for your exam point of view supra omohoid dissection it is done when the lymph nodes are removed to level the answer is uh, answer d that is level 3 so the uh, supramohoid neck dissection it is a surgical procedure that is done to remove the lymph nodes from the neck so the lymph nodes they are removed up to level of level 3 so uh, so this is supramohoid dissection so in level uh, 1a refers to removal of lymph in the submental region and 1b it refers to the removal of the lymph node in the submandibular uh, removal of the submandibular nodes level 2 includes uh, uh, the lymph nodes that are found in the upper neck along the upper third of the internal jugular vein level 3 means the lymph nodes they are situated along the middle third of the internal jugular vein they extends from the top of hyoid bone to the bottom of the cricoid cartilage Palatopharyngeal incompetency. It can be corrected by using the well. The pharyngeal flap surgery. It is usually done to correct the valvopharyngeal insufficiency by creating a flap of tissue from the posterior pharynx and attaching it to the soft palate. so that will uh, this flaps will serve to improve closure of valvopharyngeal port during speech and that will uh, improve the speech resonance so palatopharyngeal incompetency itself means that there will be inability of the soft palate and pharynx to function properly during the speech and swallow so this correcting palatopharyngeal incompetency is important for improving the speech and swelling function so pharyngeal flap surgery that may be uh, given apart from that palatal lift uh, prosthesis uh, may be given so this device will lift and support the soft palate helping it to make a uh, better contact with the back of throat so palatal lift surgery it is uh so that will be the answer of choice moving to the next question uh bifocal di uh, distraction is so in bifocal distraction uh two bone segments across uh two 
across two osteotomies. So that involves the separating two bone segments across the two osteotomies. That is, you have to cut, make a cut in the bone. And these segment uh, shift uh, toward each other to fill a void space. So mono uh, focal distraction that involves the separation of two bone cut across a single single uh, osteotome across a single osteotomy that uh, that means uh, cut in the bone a single uh, cut in the bone. So it is used when uh, it is used when unifocal means when one bone segment needs to be moved. Whereas the bifocal distraction is used when the defect in bone uh, leads to separation of two bony segments. By such a distance that Interpositional bone is required to align the two segments. So this technique it is suitable when gaps or void exist, exist between the bone segment that need to be aligned. So the example of bifocal distraction it is commonly used in correction of mid phase and maxillary defi uh, deficiency. The trifocal distraction is similar to bifocal but it involves the use of uh, use of the two bony disc uh, that are distracted from opposite ends toward each other to dock in the middle. So this technique is used when there is larger defect that require more extensive correction and when three bone segments need to be aligned. So it, it's used in the case of complex craniofacial anomalies that involves both horizontal and vertical correction. While removing the ankylotic mass from TMJ, what should be the surgeon be prepared of? The answer is A. While removing ankylotic mass from TMJ, the surgeon should be prepared for possibility of sudden hemorrhage from the pterygoid plexus, venous plexus or the internal maxillary artery. So these structures, they are lie very closely in close proximity to the TMJ region. Operating theatres, they are sterilized by uh, they are sterilized by using formaldehyde gas. We know formaldehyde it is effective disinfectant and sterilizing agent that is used to fumigate and sterilize the environment, including the surfaces and equipments in the operating rooms. So answer is C. Which of following cyst is rarely seen in maxilla? It's the solitary bone cyst. Uh, they are more common in mandible as compared to maxilla. In visor osteotomy, which cortices is placed superiorly? So in visor osteotomy, uh, the lingual cortex of the mandible it is made it is placed more superiorly. So this surgical procedure involves the central splitting of the mandible in a buccolingual direction. 
and the lingual section of the mandible it is placed superiorly and uh, uh, and the wires in place which of following is done for increasing the depth uh, increasing the depth of lower of mouth it's the croner technique we have discussed this technique already so answer is c mark that the other options the clark technique it is used for vestibule it is a technique that is used for vestibuloplasty uh, its main focus is increasing the depth of labial vestibule kazanjian technique it is a technique that is used for vestibuloplasty and it involves creating a submucosal tunnel to increase the vestibular depth and it can be used for both labial and lingular vestibuloplasty which of following is not the choice of treatment of the ameloblastoma ameloblastoma it is typically treated with surgical excision surgical removal of the ameloblastoma lesion it is the primary and most important approach to manage the tumor uh, catheterization and chemotherapy they are not typically used as they are not the primary treatment for ameloblastoma radiotherapy is generally not the first line treatment for ameloblastoma because uh, we know uh, ameloblast uh, ameloblastoma tumors they are radio resistant so answer is mark answer c as your choice multiple odontogenic keratosis mandibular prognathism cutaneous ophthalmic anomalies they are feature of well they are feature of basal cell nevus uh, basal cell nevus it is also known as gorling gorth syndrome that is characterized by multiple odontogenic keratosis mandibular prognathism and various cutaneous and ophthalmic anomalies so remember this occurs due to the mutation in ptch1 gene remember that other features include the palmer plantar pits skeleton anomalies and increased risk of basal cell carcinoma which of following incision is used to expose maxilla while performing maxillectomy well it's the weber ferguson incision weber ferguson incision it is commonly used incision to assess the maxilla during maxillectomy so that involves uh, making an incision that splits uh, the midline of the upper lip so for better remember for the better cosmetic results the incision is given along the filtral ridges and along the vermilion border so this incision provide access to maxilla and allow for surgical procedure in this uh, region if the voluntary tongue control is lost the best way for management of airway in that case would be so when the voluntary tongue control is lost and there is risk for airway compromise the best management is to secure a definite airway so ensuring a stable and secure airway it is our priority in situation where tongue control is lost and there is uh, risk for airway compromise 
in abbe cylinder flap they are used for reconstruction of lip so they are uh, it is a, uh, the abbe cylinder flap it is a surgical technique that is used in reconstruction of lip so that is spe uh, specifically designed to address the full thickness loss of the lip so the technique involves the use of local local flaps to repair the lip defect and it is the most common use for lip reconstruction when there is a significant defect that require tissue transfer from one area to other uh, other area of the lip in performing mandibular nerve block for child patient the most probable cause of failure of anesthesia is well the answer is b given very clearly in your shoba tendon when performing a mandibular nerve block for child anesthesia the angulation of the needle it may be a need to adjust due to difference in the anatomy compared to the adults as we know that the mandibular foramen in the children it is uh, located at the lower level than the occlusion plane of the primary teeth so that means the injection must be made slightly lower failure to adjust the needle angulation to accommodate this difference in anatomy it can leads to lack of anesthesia in desired area that can result in uh, failed block so the correct needle placement it is essential for successful administration of mandibular nerve block in children the advantage of nasotracheal intubation is answer is c the nasotracheal intubation where the tube it is uh, passed through nose into the trachea so this tube is passed from the nose into the trachea so this tube avoids uh, so it avoids the need to have a tube in the oral cavity so that can help to maintain a better, a better oral hygiene during the period of intubation so that's your answer which of following is used to show case of skull sphenoid sinus position orientation of condyle and fracture of zygomatic arch the submento vertex view it is also known as base or skull axial view that is used to know the various aspect of skull sphenoid sinus orientation of condyles and fracture of zygomatic arch during the administration of uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve block the landmarks that guide the operator are anterior border of coronoid process and the answer is a anterior border of ramus